We've spotted some weird stuff out in the middle of a field in Texas. This concrete blast target was spotted from an airplane out near SpaceX's McGregor rocket engine test facility. If you don't know what McGregor is, it's a little town in the middle of Texas out near Waco where SpaceX has a massive rocket engine test and development facility. They have all sorts of different stands where they can test engines and engines are pointing down and they're pointing sideways and they've got Raptors and they've got Merlins and all this sort of stuff. So let's take a look at some of the things we've seen going on there in the last couple weeks. We're going to kick it off with a Raptor relight test. I can see the comments already. Big deal. Well, it kind of is a big deal. What you're looking at here is the tripod stand. It's this massive vertical stand where they can test engines pointed down at the ground. They use this to test single Raptor engines, like, like one engine at a time. And it's got this massive blast shield on the bottom, this big steel angle thing that helps redirect the exhaust, right? It's also got these water spray nozzles on it, so it makes it really easy for us to predict when this thing is going to go off. Now, it might look a little bit like the orbital launch mount, but it's actually got the blast deflector on it. It's not just a flat piece of concrete. Cough, cough, starbase. This Raptor fires for about 40 seconds in the test. And then you see it shut down. But weirdly, after it shuts down, it waits a few seconds and then lights up again. Why would SpaceX be testing the ability to rapidly relight an engine? Think about the phases of flight for a Starship, maybe think about the phases of flight for a Falcon 9. And remember that if you're trying to have a rapidly reusable rocket system, Starship's supposed to be completely reusable, which is what these Raptor engines are going to be used for, you need to be able to get the pieces of your rocket back. You don't let them just fall in the drink down in the ocean. So what we saw in the RTLS video, if you've seen that, is the boost back burn. The booster engine shut down, the Starship separates, goes on its way, and then the booster flips around and boosts back towards the site so that it can land to be recovered, get another Starship on top, and do it all again. That's the entire point of the Starship program, right? So SpaceX out here at McGregor seems to be practicing this ability to relight Raptor engines. It's not oh, 10 minutes in between and we got to go and change everything and make sure the lines are fit and then re-bleed this and chill that and that sort of thing. No, it's do the firing, shut it down, a few seconds later, Fire it up again, and as you can see, it's working pretty well so far. Real quick, another thing we love about the tripod test stand is that you can see the engine flames really clearly, and when the lighting's just right, you can actually see the mock diamonds. Mock diamonds, shock diamonds, exhaust diamonds, you know, whichever you want to call them, they're actually something that shows you the effects of the atmosphere pushing the rocket plume back together. The flames coming out the back of the rocket, the atmosphere actually pushes on it. So the exhaust exits the engine bell and it wants to expand outwards, but the atmosphere is in the way and it pushes it back towards itself and then it, it sort of meets. The engine exhaust hits itself in the middle, makes a little concentrated diamond, and then it bounces off of itself and starts to expand again. And the atmosphere says, no, 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 back to the middle. And it comes back in again and makes a little expansion point, a little diamond right where it bounces off of itself and goes back and forth and back and forth. And you can see that on the tripod stand. We've actually got a design in our store that celebrates that, of course, Diamonds are forever. Mock diamonds are forever. We got it on mugs and t-shirts and stuff like that. The shop guy needs to send me one of these shirts so I can wear it in the next video. Now here's some cool imagery. This actually comes from our buddy Gary, who's a pilot that flies over McGregor all the time and takes photos for us. This actually is showing an RVAC on the stand. RVAC. Oh, you're just trying to be cool, like saying stuff, right? No, it's a Raptor vacuum engine. And if you look at this closely, there's actually two engines in this photo. There's a Raptor sea level, there's a Raptor vacuum engine. If you've heard any of our explanations about the size of the nozzle and how an engine that needs to operate in space where there's no atmosphere versus an engine that works down at sea level where there's lots of atmosphere and how the flames work on those two different engines and how you basically harness the thrust of the engine, right? You'll see that the one on the left has this big engine bell. The one on the right has a little engine bell. That means that the one on the left is an engine that's optimized to work in a vacuum. It needs the extra structure of the engine bell to hold the exhaust going in a specific direction instead of just fanning all out. Remember the plume expansion I was talking about in the RTLS video? 
you don't want that plume expansion, or you want to minimize that plume expansion, and so you make a big nozzle to help all the exhaust keep going in one direction instead of expanding straight out the sides. Down at sea level, on the right-hand engine, you don't need that big engine bell because the atmosphere is actually acting as your engine bell. The atmosphere is pushing in and helping that flame, sort of, you know, the pencil-shaped flame like I was talking about, stay in a line and go out the back of your rocket instead of going out the sides of the rocket, if that makes sense. The back of the engine instead of going out the sides of the engine. So those are two different engines you can see on the stand here. We're going to focus on the left-hand engine first, that RVAC, the Raptor Vacuum, optimized to work in space. This is actually the engine that goes up on the bottom of the starships if you saw the full stack come out right you got three of the raptor vacuum engines and you got three of the raptor sea level engines for a total of six engines on the bottom of a starship all right so that's a raptor vacuum on the horizontal stand let's back off to one of our mcgregor live camera sites and watch the test so here they've got this big berm right this whole thing out here is actually a huge uh, earthwork. So they just use a bulldozer and they pile up some dirt and they fire rocket engines at it, right? The primary thing we see because of the berm is the amount of heat coming off of the engine. You can actually see the heat sort of roiling up from behind the burn. And then the test ends after like a minute and 52 seconds. It's always like, eh, it, was, it was a minute and 53 seconds, it was a minute and 51 seconds. We don't have an official timer or stats from SpaceX or anything like that. So we just, we literally just listen to the sound and we're like, yep, it sounds like a minute and 52 seconds. How do you know which engine is firing? There were two engines. You can't see the engine. Check this out. There's a little vent that pops up when the Raptor vacuum on this specific stand goes. And we don't know what it's called. It's called the, we call it the train vent. That's not the official SpaceX name, but it looks like a little train stack thing coming up. Is it flames? Is it gases? Is it flaming gases that come out? I don't know, but we call it the train vent and that's how we know that it's this specific stand that's going. So now we're gonna get to the really interesting thing we saw in that last flyover, hence also the title of this video. We've already talked about the Raptor vacuum engine on the left-hand side, so let's look over on the Raptor sea level side at that other horizontal bay. So yeah, they fire engines on this stand all the time. We have hundreds of clips of t engines being tested on this horizontal stand, but there's a new feature that we noticed in this flyover. Check this out. They've installed this massive concrete foundation, footing, what do you want to call it, right? And it's got some mounting points on the top of it. Look at this, like bolts that are sticking up from that huge block of concrete. And then right next to it, They've got like a blast target. Look at that thing. That thing is designed to take some force. Those massive steel, I guess I'm gonna say 45 degree angle reinforcements coming down the back in that huge block of concrete. And it's not that they're building this one time. It's not like a bridge, oh, we're gonna put it in and then we're done with it. Look at the top of it. Like right here, you can actually see that they've got these like load attach points where they could hook up a crane or a sling or some way to lift that up and down. And between that, and the bolts that are sticking up from the piece of concrete, I'm gonna guess they've designed this to be able to rapidly change out the targets. So check out where the engine is, and that engine is pointing directly at the concrete target foundation structure thing. And if they're able to rapidly switch that in and out, I have a feeling they're gonna get a lot of great information on what happens when Raptor exhaust hits a flat piece of eh, concrete, Martite, it's just special concrete, coated concrete, concrete with a shield in front of it, concrete with a special shape, concrete that's slightly sloped in a direction, whatever it is, they can test it here on this pad. And I bet you after testing it on the small scale, we see some of those things implemented at the big launch pads down there at Starbase. We're supposed to be flying orbital test flight. Hey, hopefully this year and Kennedy Space Center. It's just one more thing that goes to show how important all the tests that happen at McGregor are for the entire rest of the program. Remember, they're not just testing Raptor engines here, they're testing Merlin engines, they're testing second stages, all sorts of stuff. They even have the ability to intentionally blow up engines if they want, like, does it go to 11? Oh, okay, it's working fine at 11, what about 12? Whoops, there it went. Um, they have the ability to test that out at McGregor and they do it early and often, and that's one of the reasons you see all the successful tests at the more visible areas, Starbase, rocket launches, Falcon 9s, all that sort of stuff. McGregor, we appreciate what you do, even if not very many people know what it is. 
Anyways, I hope you learned something from our time together here. I know we don't do a lot of videos where we do a bunch of commentary explaining exactly what's going on, but last time I asked, and you left me comments telling us that we should do more explanations, and here we are again. For now, my name's John Galloway for NASA Spaceflight, and we'll see you nerds later. <laughs>